face the state. We've, we've got 20 kids, which is the least amount of kids we've ever had going off of football here, but we knew that this was going to happen. Um, and so we've lost roughly 100, 115 kids, you know, half our kids since then. A good number for us next year will be 12. I mean, but realistically, we're probably looking at 9 or 10. I could see this playing out, and, and we're going to have one school be in, in more than eight, nine, one year, and we're going to make sure they're going to be out. And it's just going to be a revolving door. I actually think Class B is in a world of hurt, and uh, um, especially from the, the football standpoint. Hello and welcome to Face the State. I'm Tom Wiley. Realignment in high school football is a fact of life. Over time, enrollment can fluctuate, participation can vary, but from August to November, most teams find a way to put enough players on the field for four quarters. But recently, that's been proving difficult for many small towns and schools across the Treasure State, and nowhere is it more dire than it is in Class B, 11-man football. At the turn of the century, Class B boasted nearly 50 schools. This this fall, only 27 teams will take the field as Class B 11-man squads. Last year, the classification lost 11 teams, with nine of them moving down to the eight-man level. This upcoming season, state runner-up Shelby will join them. After losing 11 seniors to graduation, the Coyotes appealed to the MHSA to move to the Northern Sea eight-man division. That's a decision that was a few years in the making. It's, it's probably been a two-year process. We looked into it a couple years ago. Um, to be honest with you, we knew we had a strong senior class coming back, a junior and senior class. Um, the competitive side of it, those kids and us just thought the best thing to do would be to get through another year. Um, that would be the right thing to do. Um, so the process started a couple years ago with MHSA and talking to them about what our options were. Um, we turned around in November, applied for it, we were denied. They had a few questions as far as, you know, our roster size, um, potentially. Uh, Obviously, we had a nice run at the end of the season and played the state championship game, and, and those things are always looked at. Um, but anybody that's uh, played sports in particular just knows that it takes a little bit of luck to get that far. So anyway, we went and visited with them in January, went through those uh, questions that they had for us, and um, I think we answered them for them, and, and we moved forward with it. Mike White first came to Shelby 15 years ago. He's been the head coach of the Coyotes football team for 10 a lot has changed over the last decade. You know, I think I started um, off and on, you know, was it close to 12, 12, 15 years ago, and, and we were hovering around 230. Um, and so we've lost roughly 100, 115 kids, you know, half our kids since then. Um, you know, we've never had a strong number. Um, there's times we've had 21 kids out. Sometimes we've practiced with 18. Um, you know, that just depends on each community and, and what type of community you're in sometimes. Uh, but as far as that, we've lost numbers, um, and I think I don't think we're the only ones. I know we're not the only ones. It's going to be something that happens around our area and around the state uh, in the next few years for sure. So the question is, where are the kids going? There's no easy answer. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's the kids go anywhere. It's just uh, the people aren't necessarily coming back. You know, there's a lot of different theories out there of, of why. Um, we have a ton of kids that participate. Um, we have kids that get jobs and, and, and work and, uh, you know, try to pay for their own car or, or what have you. But uh, for the most part, uh, I just think there's a lack of people moving back to these small communities. And while Shelby has fielded competitive 11-man teams recently, it came at the expense of the sub-varsity level. With less than 22 players at practice, it became difficult to scrimmage and impossible to field a JV sophomore or freshman team. It was an easy call, you know, eventually you just got to figure out what you think is best for your program and our, our main push was we wanted to play sub-varsity games, we wanted to be able to uh, build a program and have something consistent rather than week in and week out have game cancellations. As far as rivalries, you know, it wasn't that long ago that the Fort Bentons and the Sims, the Cascades, they were all in our league. Um, and so we'll resurrect some of those, yeah we'll lose some Cutbanks and some Conrads, but uh, like I said, I. I feel pretty strongly that in the next two to three years, um, there's going to be some changes throughout the state. You know, we did play a sub varsity schedule. Um, we did play the eight man. We played the Fort Bentons. We played uh, the Simses in a couple of those schools. Um, that's kind of what we were regulated to do because of our numbers. And uh, the year before, we didn't have any sub varsity games. So, again, it goes back to being able to build that program, get those kids playing. Um, it's tough when you. Uh, your freshman, sophomore, and you sit for two straight years, do nothing but practice, and then all of a sudden you expect to play or if you even continue to play. So those are the things we're looking forward to for sure. 
Now the Coyotes become the 13th member of the very tough Northern C8 man division following Shoto is a District 1B drop down from a year ago. The field and the playbook have to change, but Coach White and Shelby are well equipped for the transition. For me, as I've coached eight man before, I was at Medicine Lake in Eastern Montana, so it's just kind of dusting off the old playbook and uh, working with our coaches. Um, our uh, assistant coach, Bob Bruzwin, he has experience. He was up in the Sunburst for a while in the Air 8 Man. Um, I don't know if the challenges, it'll be what's, the, what's changed in the last 10 years, so to speak, since we've both been in it and how people have adapted to what everybody's doing, whether you know it's the zone read or RPOs and all that kind of stuff, football talk. But uh, for the most part, I think it'll be a pretty easy transition. The competition we know will stay the same, if not get tougher. Um, we're in the north, and anytime you're in the north in anything, you know it's going to be a, a, a battle. I always hope we compete no matter what, um, what we have coming back, you know. Um, we're going to get a little film, uh, we're going to go to some camps this summer and uh, you know we're just going to go from there. I'm hoping that coming off of last year's success, the last few years, not only in football but you got basketball, you got wrestling, you know, track they've had success so we're hoping to build that culture around here in everything we do um, and that will carry over and the wins and losses will take care of themselves. One of the big problems with reclassification is the scheduling. With 13 teams now in the Northern C8 man division, how do you split the teams up and how do you determine how many teams from each division make the playoffs when there are just seven teams in the entire South? And Shelby's move also leaves just six teams in the Class B Northern Division, all facing similar situations. These are the latest enrollment numbers for the remaining schools in the Northern B. All of them, as you can see, trending downward, and it's not isolated. Several more schools across the state are facing a numbers crunch, including one of the most successful programs in all of Montana. Fairfield High School has been below Class C enrollment level for years, yet somehow the Eagles managed to compete and win championships regularly in Class B. But now they know change is coming and they're ready to face it. And, and I think the bottom line is, is, is we have been fortunate to go through a nice run of, of student mm -hmm. athletes and uh, been, been fortunate to, to be on the, on the upper end of, of, of some contests. I think it is a, a level ex of expectation with the kids themselves, mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's, it's important to their parents and it's Im important to the, the community. But it's not just athletics. Like we just found out, you, you know, that we were the highest in the state in the ACT in math. Uh, we're in the top five ACT, you, you know, overall. Uh, so it's not just one thing. It's, it's a culmination of, of many factors. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, we've been fortunate. We've been fortunate to stay healthy. You know, the, you saw the girls program this year, you know, got, got hit. And uh, so we've been... Uh, fortunate on, on, on several levels. And uh, um, it is something that, you know, that the younger kids have seen and, and those, those people that have been before them mm -hmm. have done a good job of doing things the right, right way, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of, of working hard and in terms of being good people. And, and then those younger kids get to see that and watch that and then hopefully em emulate it. Fairfield is certainly fortunate to have great student athletes, but who knows what the future holds. That's why Coach Meyer and several other coaches and administrators around the state are starting the conversation about what lies ahead for Class B teams. I actually think Class B is in a world of hurt, mm -hmm. and uh, um, especially from the, the football standpoint. You, you know, the, the option to be able to go eight man is, is there and, and very a valid reason to do that, you know, because of numbers. And then... Uh, um, but those communities have a lot of pride, and they want to stay up. So they're, you know, staying up for the maybe the other the other sports. But football is a is a numbers game. Uh, the nine man uh, has been thrown around a, a lot, and, and a lot of us have talked about that. Um, there hasn't there's traction, but there's not a lot of traction. At the same time, you know, a, a nine man league in the in the state would be awesome. The problem with that is what happens to those. Class B schools that don't have the enrollment to go nine man and they don't have the enrollment to go class A. That would be a very, very difficult thing for, for class B and for those schools. So there isn't a, there isn't a nice, easy answer, mm -hmm. you, you know. Uh, um, at the same time, a lot of those schools could go eight man, but 
but it, it's Class B in Class B football mm -hmm. is in a challenging position right now, I think. A nine-man football league might work for teams in central Montana, but what about the far-flung schools to the east and to the west? Yeah, Class B in the MHSA is looking at it, okay. and, and there are lots of conversations about it. The, 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 the problem is, is um, it's spread out. There is such a disparity in enrollments. Uh, you know, you have the, the, the bakers of the world or the, the, the wolf points of the world. Well, they have to be able to play somebody, you, you know, and, and their enrollment is where it is. And, uh, or the, your, the, the Eurekas, you, you know, that's, you have such tips. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a difficult conversation that, that everybody has with, it. and there's not going to be a solution that everybody goes, oh yeah, that's the best thing. You know, it's gonna be, it's, 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 it's difficult. Class B football as it stands is not sustainable. As more and more schools struggle to field 11-man squads or even have enough players to practice and build programs, Meyer thinks small towns need to start having important discussions about the future, and that includes the Fairfield Eagles. Is your enrollment is X, mm -hmm. and then they say, okay, you are in this classification, if you want to stay, then you need to write a letter saying we're going we're gonna to stay. Mm -hmm. So that's the way that, that works. Uh, yeah, I guess, you know, never say never. And, and uh, does the conversation need to happen? Yes, it does. Uh, and, but at the same time, that conversation should happen. So if you elect to stay, everybody's on the same page. If you elect to, to, to go down, everybody's had a, had a voice in that. Right now, nine-man football is played in Minnesota as well as North and South Dakota. The rules are similar to eight-man football. Five players on the line of scrimmage, four in the backfield, so essentially you're just adding another running back. But here's the catch. You can play the game on an 11-man field, utilizing the entire 100 yards, which would mean that Class B schools wouldn't have to alter their fields and bring the goalposts closer if they went down to the nine-man level. As Coach Meyer said, it is a proposal that's being looked at by the MHSA as well as coaches and administrators, but it's not a realistic option yet. Plenty more obstacles need to be addressed before moving forward, including scheduling and travel distance. Well, shrinking class sizes are also having an effect on Montana's smallest schools and towns. The last decade has seen many traditional Class C powers and rivals forced to co-op just to field a six-man team. The Denton Geyser Stanford Bearcats saw immediate success when they joined forces back in 2013. They finished runner-up in their first year, made the semifinals in their second year, and won a six-man title in 2015. But the Bearcats enrollment fluctuated, and the MHSA moved DGS up to the eight man ranks and while there were more kids in the schools participation stayed low and after a year where the team struggled and barely managed to field eight men DGS will move back to the six man ranks in 2018. We did have to appeal for it it mainly came about we finished out last year with only nine guys in a uniform so just feasibly looking at next year we knew that if we had to stay eight it would be a really really hard thing to even field a team so we went to MHSA and fortunately they let us drop down to six. I think 13 guys at the start of the year and then it seemed like everybody kept getting injured and injured and one thing after another so ended up like I said finishing with nine in a uniform. Just over a decade ago when Matt Newman starred for Geyser, the three schools of Geyser, Stanford and Denton were six-man powers in their own right, rivals that battled back and forth for central and state supremacy. Now flash forward to 2018, the pride is still there, the numbers are not. I mean, just less kids at all the schools, and, and even now I think the participation rates have went down. I mean, it seemed like when I was in high school, even 10 years ago, there might be two, three boys that aren't playing sports. Now it seems like, you know, there could be a lot more than that. I mean, we probably have 10 or so that aren't really into sports, have their interests elsewhere, which is fine, but it, I think participation rates in sports overall has definitely declined. Yeah, it's hard, and I mean, a good number for us next year will be 12. I mean, but realistically, we're probably looking at 9 or 10. 
Uh, I believe we have two coming up. So lost seven, gain and two. Hopefully talk a few more into going out. So it'll be it'll be tough. And though the teams came together by necessity, the rewards extended beyond the football field. Um, I mean, it's necessary, so we're, we're making the best of it. I think the beautiful thing about it is people from Geyser that might never know these kids or people from Denton have, have built these fantastic relationships. So, I mean, it's a good thing. It's brought a lot of people together for a good cause. And, I mean, in basketball, we, we were able to win districts, and I know that just puts a smile on everybody's face when you're able to do that because, um, in all reality, no one school could have their own team. So, I mean, it's been awesome, the relationships everyone's been able to build. I'm so close with all those kids. I've got to be with them in football, basketball, and track. And we're definitely going to miss them. I mean, they're great leaders, not only on our sports teams, but in the school and communities that they all live in. So, And there's a couple seniors from each place, Geyser, Denton, and Stanford. So every community is going to be losing a lot when those kids graduate. Now the DGS Bearcats are once again going to the six-man level after two years as an eight-man team. With enrollment fluctuating, it's hard to know how long they will stay there, but at the end of the day, whether six-man or eight-man football, these kids just want to play. Oh yeah, they just want to play. That's all they're worried about. They are excited, I mean, mainly for the fact that we know we will for sure have a team and, and get to play all our games, so that's, that's their big excitement about it. And I think after a rough campaign last year, kids are pretty hopeful that we'll hopefully win some more games this year. Oh, just go back, refresh ourselves, and figure out kind of what our personnel is and what kind of offense we do want to run, what kind of defense we want to run, and, and try, to, try to design everything around the players that we are going to have, so give them most opportunity for success. Over the past few years, several schools have had to cancel their varsity season due to low numbers. Hot Springs, Fort Benton, Poplar, Lincoln, just to name a few. The Bearcats hope the move to six men will prevent that from happening to these tradition-rich communities. I hope not. It makes me nervous, but I hope not. I like not to think about it, so. <laughs> the most recent enrollment figures has the DGS co-op at 73 students, so let's take a look at the MHSA enrollment ranges for high school football. The Bearcats are above the 65 student margin for six men. However, they were able to successfully petition the MHSA to drop down based on two factors. One, they were able to show low participation and that they only expect nine to ten players will suit up in the fall. And two, the Bearcats only won two games in the eight-man south this season and lost seven seniors. So competing at the eight-man level would not have been feasible. Participation can certainly be tricky and oftentimes it corresponds to the success of a team. In the case of Box Elder, the Bears have always had successful basketball squads and they had no problem drawing kids to the hardwood. Football, though, was another story. We struggle with that every, every year. Um, kids that, you know, oh, well, you should come out and you, know, you should try out football. I think, you'd, I think you'd enjoy it. It's just, you know, getting them out there, getting them, getting them conditioning, getting them thinking football, catching the ball, throwing the ball. Um, and until they do that, they don't really know if they enjoy it or not. So it's just a matter of getting kids out there. I mean, we got the athletes. Um, we definitely got the numbers. It's just, it's just getting them interested and motivated. Three years ago, Box Elder made an incredible run to the six-man title game. The next year, they saw a program record number of kids come out for football, but it was a double-edged sword. Even, even the year we went to the to that championship game with DGS, I think we, we only ended with 14, 15 kids, you know, so um, that was the first year we actually got to put a offense defense together out against each other and, you know, mimic what other teams are trying to do. And, you know, that that helps, you know what I mean? And you go and practice with eight guys, you know, and even in six man football, it's difficult. You know what I mean? It's difficult yeah. to keep kids uh, motivated. It's difficult to uh, game plan. So um, when when you do get to have that you know, the numbers, the participation numbers up there, it definitely helps and it, and it, and it helps with the motivation. That's, I think that's the biggest thing. Keep them in the past when we did make that run, we had some athletes, we had some studs and you know, the following year we come out and we're like, oh man, we got 25 plus kids now because you know, we did have that success. Mm -hmm. We, we, we follow it up with a, a little less successful year 
and numbers drop, you know, so success breeds success definitely around the community. Box Elder has always been one of the larger Class C schools, but they were able to remain in six man because participation was historically low. The uptick in numbers after the run of the title game forced them to the eight man ranks, but the wins did not follow. Following that state run, we did actually get, we did petition the state six man and they mm -hmm. did allow us that first year. That's right. Then the following year, they, you know, they pushed us up into the eight man. Um, but yeah, that transition and and just you know, hey, we're not we're not going out against those same teams. It's it's a little different. There's factors mm -hmm. there that you know you build these rivalries with other schools, and then pretty soon, well, they're not on our schedule anymore, and kids kind of show a little less interest. Um, I mean, I'd love to have 20, 30 kids every year. It just hasn't been that way. So, lack of success is one thing, but Coach Rosette knows there are plenty of other factors keeping kids off the field. It's hard to say. It could be a number of different things. I think, I think. Uh, I mean, I hate to say it. Some kids, you know, um, just you know, have always d done nothing but, you know, whether play basketball or or just hasn't showed interest in it. Um, um, you would you would think they'd want to get out and do a little more and be part of a team, things like that. But um, some people are, you know, a little fearful. You know, especially with. Um, things like the concussion playing a major factor, you know what I mean? Some parents are a little weary, you know, um, about having kids get hurt, saving themselves for basketball, things like that. Um, but I think our kids, I mean, they're, they're a tough bunch, the group that we do have playing. So um, if we could get a couple more kids to come out, a couple more kids out to high school, I think, I think we'll fare okay. Rosette thinks a move back to the six-man ranks might be a better fit for the Bears, but it will have to wait for at least one more season. I think I missed the ball this year. I think we would have had a strong case to um, go back into the six-man ranks, but there's there's other factors and there's other things that, you know, out of season, you know, you got people that are scheduling, and it's a scheduling nightmare too if you don't know who's coming in, who's coming, who's leaving. Um, Matt Molyneux out in Chinook does uh, a great job scheduling and you know if they got they got you on a schedule and they're assuming you're going to be there for at least that two-year rotation you don't want to you don't want to mess with it you you know you played a card you played a hand you're dealt and you deal with it um i think the idea is to see where we're at this year with numbers uh, mid-season and we'll plan our petition that at that point you know if we got 20 guys i think i've always said box elder would be should be an eight-man school you know what i mean but with participation numbers so low and the um, history of participation numbers, I think, I think it would benefit our kids to be at that six-man ranks. But, but we'll play wherever they tell us to sure. play. <laughs> There's no telling what the numbers will be in the future, but Rosette thinks there might be a solution just 15 miles to the east. Uh, Rocky Boy Box Elder used to co-op in the past for eight man. I mean, so I mean, I think that's what, think that's what you might see. You know what I mean? You might see some co-ops for the eight man. Now, you know, that you normally didn't have as opposed to co-ops just for the six man or those types of things. So I think that might be something down, down the pipe that people are going to be seeing more often. I could see this playing out and, and we're going to have one school be in, in the northern eight man one year and then the next year they're going to be out. And it's just going to be a revolving door of new teams in, new teams out. So, you know, the only solution is just to stick with um, stick with what you have, I guess. I mean, it's hard to say that, you know what I mean? You got, I mean, we got kids that, that are pretty, pretty anxious to get back out there and, and play, play games and play, get on the field with their, with their buddies. But they also got parents that are, you know, we should, we should petition for six man, you know what I mean? And, and it's, it's, a, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to tell a kid, no, I'm not going to petition for a six man. And then, then they get a little discouraged, you know what I mean? So there's not really any one solution, one main solution. I don't think, I think it's just, it's just a matter of sticking to what we have and going with it. And if you're, if you're destined to be an eight man, you're destined to be an eight man, I guess so. And it's not just a Montana issue. National participation in high school football continues to decline across the country, whether it be from fear of concussions or athletes choosing other sports. According to the National Federation of State High School Associations, the number of high school football players peaked during 2008 when 1.14 million teens hit gridirons across the country, but by 2017 that number was down by about 50,000 
to 1.09 million. Around 25,000 of that decrease, or around half the total, took place last year. Overall football participation has decreased by 3.5% over the last five years. Meanwhile, the total number of high school athletes participating across all sports continues to rise, reaching a record for both boys and girls of 7,963,000 just last year. Well, of course, despite all the shuffling, declining enrollment and participation, high schools are certainly making the best of their situations. The Shoto Bulldogs made the move from Class B to eight man this past fall. They had a very successful year making the playoffs and posting a six and two overall record in the Northern C eight man division. They're a good blueprint for success for teams dropping from 11 to eight man football. We caught up with the Shoto Bulldogs before the season started to see how they handled this difficult transition. The first thing you notice at Shoto Bulldogs football practice is the field. It, it was weird. We stepped out yesterday when we were handing out equipment. We walked out there and just see how narrow and short it is. It just seemed weird, you know, like seemed like a whole new, it seemed like recess ball. The second thing you notice is the number of athletes. We've got 20 kids, which is the least amount of kids we've ever had going out for football here. But, but the third thing you notice, it's business as usual. Let's go. No matter what class they play in or how many players are on the field, the Bulldogs are up for the challenge. And third-year head coach Lucas Gunderson is busy making sure that his team makes a seamless transition to their new league. We knew that this was going to happen, but we love this core. I mean, it's a solid core of 20 kids that, you know, know what it means to be a team. And uh, they're putting in the work right now, and they did in the offseason. So we're really looking forward to what these guys bring. Shoto moves from the tough District 1B to the brutal Northern C, which means they'll trade in established rivals for new ones. Playing teams like Belt and Box Elder and um, CGI and Centerville and Chinook and teams just like that to have tough conferences and tough teams you have to hear. I'm excited to play them and see what they can give us. So well, A little bit bummed, you know, because we do have our rivalries. We love the 1B and wish all the luck in the world to those teams out there. But, you know, we're excited for new rivalries. We don't know who they're going to be yet, but they'll make themselves apparent pretty quick. But you won't find a single negative attitude on the practice field. Football is football. And behind senior leadership, the Bulldogs are grateful to play the game they love and confident they can carve out a place in the top eight-man division. It's about toughness, really. I mean, Coming to practice and you gotta be ready to play every time. Without toughness, I don't know, we're nothing really. Tom Wiley, MTN Sports. Well, football is changing, but it's not going away anytime soon. It's gonna go through its growing pains. Montana's ever-changing landscape plays a bleak picture for Class B high school football fans, though. So much so that the once proud classification appears to be headed toward a crossroads. Looking beyond the 2018 season requires a crystal ball into which few are comfortable looking. That's it for Face the State. Thanks for watching, everybody.